considered by some to be the greatest composer of all time. Johann Sebastian Bach is a name we associate with some of the most well-known pieces in musical history. Bach strove to use his talent as a reflection of the beauty and grace bestowed by God through his many endeavors, be it creating new compositions or performing professionally. Ever on the search for new inspiration, it is said that in his dedication as a young musician, he would walk as many as 250 miles to hear or learn new music. Bach lived a life of faith and dedication shared with his family and in turn with the world through his timeless musical creations. With a life often touched by tragedy, Bach's convictions and determination were essential to his endurance. Though history limits our view on the complete portrait of Bach, the depiction portrays a man strongly dedicated to his work, family, and above all, to God. Born in Eisenach, Germany on March 31, 1685, Bach was greatly influenced by a musical ancestry dating back several generations. His father, Johann Ambrosius Bach, played several instruments and was director of the town musicians. Under his instruction, Bach began learning to play the violin, harpsichord, and organ from a very early age. Sadly, neither of Bach's parents lived to see his accomplishments, as they both died when he was only nine years old. The loss deeply affected Bach, and his grief would have instilled a deeper emotional understanding, which translated into his music and character. Later tragedies in Bach's life, including the death of his first wife and many of his children, would contribute to the emotional complexity from which Bach would find an expression through music. After the death of his parents, Bach moved in with an older brother, Johann Christoph. Christoph was a talented organist for a church in Ordra and helped Bach continue developing skill with instruments. During one period in his teens, Bach copied out some forbidden musical manuscripts on the sly until he got caught by his brother. Much to the dismay of Bach, the documents were confiscated and access cut off. Ironically, he would regain access to the manuscripts only a few months later, due to the unexpected death of his brother, another tragedy in the young Bach's life. Bach was also influenced by the faith and musical legacy of Martin Luther, the great Reformation leader. Before Luther's time, sacred music was mostly sung by the priest and clergymen, but Luther believed that congregations should be permitted to worship through the singing of hymns. Shared by both Bach and Luther, this belief is summed up in Luther's own words. We have put this music on the living and holy word of God in order to sing, praise, and honor it, and we are made better and stronger in faith when his holy word is impressed on our hearts by sweet music. In this, we find the key to the heart of Bach and his music. In fact, he even added the words Soli Dio Gloria, to God alone be the glory, to the end of many of his compositions. Bach began his work as an organist in 1703 in the town of Arnstadt, Germany. It was here that he met his first wife, Maria Barbara Bach, who was his second cousin. Bach left this position four years later when he was accepted for a job as an organist in Mulhausen, where he and Maria began their marriage. Although little information is known about their marriage, it appears to have been a devoted and happy one, and the couple gave birth to seven children, of which four survived into adulthood. Arguably one of his most moving pieces, the violin solo, Chacon, was inspired by his grief over Maria's death and served as a tribute to his beloved wife. At the age of 23, Bach was hired as an organist at the court of Weimar. Here he composed the majority of his organ pieces, as well as many cantatas. It was a prestigious position and his salary nearly doubled, but given disputes between dukes and the court, Bach sought employment elsewhere. However, his employer had other ideas insisting that Bach remain in his service. During this time, we see a vivid glimpse of the courage that was essential for Bach to persevere against his employer's wishes. 
Upon being offered the position of Kapellmeister at Kothen under Prince Leopold, Bach was arrested and imprisoned after attempting to leave when the Duke of Weimar refused to grant him permission to do so. After one month, the Duke reluctantly released him from prison and employment, leaving Bach free to start his new position. Bach's new job at Koth in Germany under Prince Leopold in 1717 was quite possibly the happiest in his career. A strong music enthusiast himself, Prince Leopold genuinely appreciated Bach's talent and a close friendship developed between the two of them. Bach wrote of his employment to a schoolmate saying, there I had a gracious prince as master who knew music as well as loved it and I had hoped to remain in his service until the end of my life. Although this position too was short-lived due to financial difficulties of the prince, the two men remained friends until Leopold's death in 1728. By the end of his position at Coffin, Bach's personal life had taken another turn with the death of his first wife and subsequent marriage to Anna Magdalena. With an ever-growing family to care for, Bach needed a stable job where he and Anna could settle down and raise their children. So when he heard of a promising job at the St. Thomas Church in Leipzig, Bach applied for it. Reflecting his status as a musician at the time, it is interesting to note that the employer begrudgingly gave Bach the job only after both preferred applicants declined. Of this, one of the board members infamously complained, as the best are not available, I suppose we must take one of the second-rate men. Clearly, he didn't foresee the popularity which the composer would later receive. Along with Anna, Bach nurtured a happy and orderly home in Leipzig. Between his two marriages, Bach had 20 children, of which 10 survived into adulthood. Carrying on his family's musical legacy, he was very much involved with his children's interest in music and formally trained four of his sons at the St. Thomas School. Among them, Carl Philip Emanuel met with the most notable success. He was perhaps best known for a book in which the standard use of all five fingers in playing became popularized. This was likely learned from his father, who was known for playing the organ with extreme precision, using all five fingers instead of three, as was usual for that time. Like his father, Karl Bach's compositions were considered ahead of time, evoking strong emotions through unexpected pauses and variations, which was in stark contrast to the usual delicacies of his peers. As a father, Bach was immensely proud of his children and believed them to share the musical gift which God had granted him. Anna was a gifted musician as well working as a chamber singer before marrying Bach. During Bach's busy time at Leipzig, Anna assisted him with copying his compositions and played an integral role in his success. It has even been suggested that Anna may have composed some of her own musical pieces that have been attributed to Bach. Both of their handwriting became increasingly similar, and some of the compositions were written completely by Anna. However, it would be difficult to know for sure whether any of the work was from her own creativity or merely as a mediator between Bach's creative mind and the blank pages. Bach dedicated several of his compositions to Anna, and she continued performing at home and possibly with Bach's amateur orchestra at the St. Thomas Church. Despite a small salary and limited musical resources, Bach would stay with the St. Thomas Church for the last 27 years of his life. As Cantor, Bach's chief responsibilities included teaching a large music class, arranging performances, and composing new pieces for each church service. These years proved to be his busiest and remain a testimony to his dedication and hard work. Amazingly enough, in his first two years on the job, Bach wrote nearly 120 cantatas alone. Regarding his work ethic, Bach once said, I was obliged to be industrious. Whoever is equally industrious will succeed equally well. Unfortunately, as he grew older, the physical strain began to take a toll on his body. It is likely that he suffered from diabetes and his already poor eyesight began to fail. 
In hopes of saving his vision, he had an operation. But this only made things worse, and he went completely blind. Oddly, he regained sight shortly before his death of a stroke on July 28, 1750, at the age of 65. Shortly before this, he began composing his last piece, The Art of Fugue. Although unfinished, the striking quality of the piece remains indicative of the talent he possessed until the end. In his lifetime, Bach was best known for his skill as an organist, and his compositions would not be recognized for their profound quality until 80 years after his death. For their revival, the world can thank another composer, Felix Mendelssohn, who was only 15 at the time. Upon receiving a copy of Bach's St. Matthew's Passion from his grandmother, Mendelssohn was so taken by the composition that he persisted for five years in arranging its appearance in concert. Following its first performance on March 11, 1829, the concert was successful, and from there, Bach's music rapidly earned him the recognition he deserved. Today, we are continually inspired by the legacy left by Bach as we consider the extraordinary strength and emotion found in his life as well as his music. His unique methods and creativity influenced countless other composers, including Beethoven, Mozart, and Chopin, who built upon this distinct foundation left by Bach. Along with the music, one can also appreciate the strength of character which Bach possessed as a man of God and a loving husband and father. As Richard Wagner wrote, let anyone who wishes to grasp the wonderful individuality, power, and significance of the German spirit in an incomparably eloquent image, look at the musical miracle man, Johann Sebastian Bach. <laughs>